Hey everybody, welcome back. Well, we have a ton to go over from AMD's earnings, SMCI's implosion. Apparently nobody's going to Starbucks anymore. We have a Fed that's starting to sound hawkish. And this is what we have for the S&Ps. So let's just jump right into it. Because there's some standards here that we went through before. By standards, why is this happening? Uh, and we're going to talk about this. So what we want to so note first and foremost, this is the ES as of May. This is a 55. This is a 22. This is the 12. So we have to recognize that the 12 is pointing down and we close below it. The 55 is up here and the 22 is screaming down and now we have this cross here. So we have the 22, 55 cross pointing to the downside and we are below the 12 and the 12 is down. I use a 12, a 22 and a 55. You should use what you're comfortable with. Now the purpose of me showing you this is this is what we have. So what you're gonna know and everyone that is new to this channel will, is now gonna learn is that we talk about what is actually happening in the market, not the crash that's coming, not the rally that's coming, but what is actually happening in the market. And then we make the best decisions that we possibly can with the information that we have. We don't guess, okay? It's really important to get that about what's going on right now and not be delusional. You have to actually face what's happening. So that's what this video is going to be on. Now, we tried to get up here and we rejected. NASDAQ tried to get up here and it rejected. We can make any excuse we want for it, but this is what happened today. Okay? Complete, utter rejection and encapsulation of three of the past four days. Rejecting the 22, slicing through the 12 like a hot knife through butter. All right, this is what we have. Now, we all know that we've been waiting for the Fed and what the Fed's going to do, and we're going to get into that in a moment because we saw a really interesting divergence today that I did not expect to see today, especially with the data that came out, and we are going to spend some time on that before we get into the names because it's important to connect the dots on what's going on. You have a declining, sloping down 55-day moving average. If I come over here and just watch this number that's right in that area and watch as I move that, you will see that it is declining. Okay, so what that means is that we are sloping down on the NASDAQ. Does that mean we're going to crash? No, it means at this moment in time, you have a declining 55-day moving average. Again, what it means is if we're below the 12, we don't do swing trades, right? Because it's not conducive to doing swing trades below the 12. If we're below the 22, the bears are in charge, not the bulls. Above it, the bulls are in charge. If we lose the 55, we don't have institutional support. Above, we have institutional support. Below, we don't, right? Go look at your trades. Look how much smarter you were in here versus how much smarter you are now with your trades, right? That's why you're struggling. You're using the same systems in here to trade that you were using in here. It's not going to work, right? That's why you need different tools for different environments. People that have been in the community for some time understand this, and this is actually, quite frankly, where we shine because you have to learn when to switch. Now, anybody that's looking at this chart before we go any further okay, should be able to see what I'm about to draw. But if you just very simply, let's click on this, pop this in, and I don't know why that's green. Let's make that yellow because I think it'll pop more. There it goes. Who's popping more? We are. And then we're going to click there. And what you're going to know by cloning these Okay, you're going to get a trajectory, right? And that is going to be pretty important. You should always clone them. But if you come here, right, and then if you just went to this for a second and hit, should be a hide function right there. Okay, that is very clearly what that is. I mean, it doesn't get any more clearer that that's a pendant, right? That is a bare pendant, period. It's, it's not refutable. Now, people think that Powell's going to save us or earnings are going to save us or something's going to save us. Nothing is going to save us. No one's ever saved me, right? The only thing that's ever saved me is myself by understanding what's actually happening and trading what's actually happening. So let's just deal with reality and because in a down market or if there's pressure on the downside, you can profit from it. It's actually better to have a direction than to be directionless. And it's very clear, no matter how you look at this market now, that you have a direction, right? We hit the third standard deviation on the NQ. We bounced and regressed right to what? The median line, and then we're bouncing back down, right? We talked about this a week ago. If you go take a look at Thursday's and Saturday's video from this date, you'll remember we talked right about this and saying that the minimum you're gonna regress, 
That's what you've done. The regression is over and you're only at a one standard deviation here, okay? We went through this in pretty, pretty big detail, right there on the band and you've rejected. So when you see this, you shouldn't be shocked by it, all right? Now, is it what I wanted to have happen? No, what I wanted to have happen was I wanted companies to come out and crush earnings, but we don't always get what we want, right? And so we have to deal with what actually happened. So now we know that the NASDAQ reverted from third standard deviation up. We also know that we are below these moving averages and they are pointing down. So for us to look at this and say, some other stock is going to save us this week is pretty delusional. Now, what we do need to talk about is tomorrow and the PE of the market. I don't really trade the PE of stocks. I would look at the peg of stocks, the, the earnings growth rate. But when it comes to the earnings and assumptions for pension funds, we do have to look at that. So let me show you something. Now, what we're looking at is equity risk premium. And we're going to get into the definition of a second, but you should remember this based upon earnings yield and the 10 year treasury. And then this is showing the difference between those right here, the zero line and coming over. And what we can do is let's just refresh everyone's memory on this real quick. This shows the earnings yield on the S&P minus the interest rate on the 10 year treasury notes. The earnings yield, what all the S&P stocks are going to earn right? They're going to get that yield, okay, on the earnings divided by all the names in the S&P, you're going to get a yield, and you're going to take that and you're going to minus it from the 10 year treasury note. What you get from there is what? How higher the risk premium, the more attractive stocks are, okay, are stocks more attractive or less attractive right now, okay, they're getting less attractive. A matter of fact, we talked about how we were basing here and going higher. And that's exactly what happened. But they're getting less attractive here and you're still up here. They're getting less attractive here and you're still up here. You're not even back down to here yet. And let's talk about this. Now, what was gonna save us? There's two things, the P meaning the price. Okay, price is gonna save us because we're going to have what? We're gonna have price stability, why? Because Powell's gonna cut rates. That was what started in November. Okay, he's going to cut rates or he's going to stop raising rates. Everything's going to be fine. And what we have happen is he's not. There's, they're actually even floating out that there might be a raise. I think we're way far away from that. But they're going to float it. Uh, they already started through the investment banks uh, out there. But what are you seeing here? You see a divergence? Okay, so we've been following this perfectly. And now we're up. And you see the divergence that we're starting to see? So stocks are less attractive now. Okay. And the earnings that came out this evening, and I want to clear this up before we get into it, and the earnings that came out this evening are not going to rise this up. They're going to wind up dropping it because the earnings were not great from Starbucks to SMCI to AMD. People are, are going to get angry and they, they can put lipstick on a pig any way they want, but it's still a pig. And so we're going to have to just have a little bit of honesty here on what actually happened here. Okay, So if we're looking at this and we can see how you're rising up and how you're getting ready to roll over, you have a divergence. You have to call it what it is. If, if you're honest with what's going on, you can profit from it. If you're gonna, if you're gonna not be honest about it, then you're gonna have a really tough time. So now we have to talk about tomorrow and we have to talk about the Fed and we're gonna connect all this together. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna just get as much information as I can to you to put in your hands. So you're gonna to have to deal without the editing because there's a ton to go over and I wanna make sure that everybody gets this because it's been a very long trading day. And even at the time of recording this, I still have a bunch of after hours trades that are on. Okay, so this is what's going on at the Fed. And what I wanna show you is for September, this is CME Fed tool and anybody can do this. So this is the September meeting. And if you take a look at the September meeting, what we noted was that there was absolutely a 50% chance that they were going to cut rates, 50% chance. Okay. And this was the 29th. This is today, 44% chance that they are going to what cut. Okay. That's at 39%. Two cuts went from 12 to eight and a half. Okay. So, did the economic data that came out today, was it better or worse for cutting? I would argue very clearly that it shows that things are worse than we think they are, weaker economy, and I'm gonna show you the data in a moment. So we're gonna to have to tie in, well, why did this happen? So then if we take a look here and we go out to November, we now have to go out to November from where we're at to find 
an area when we total these up where we're going to get a 50 per, 50% chance of a cut November 7th right into the election. Okay, that's where we're at now. Okay, so we went from September to November today on the cut and on this economic data. Now, in front of us, part, pardon my voice, it's been a long day and uh, it's still going on. Uh, and we have a bunch to go over still. So here's the economic data that came out. And with this data, if we just take a look at it, everyone all of a sudden was an expert on employment cost benefits today at 8.30 when nobody's looked at this data forever. And for whatever reason, the market decided to sell on it. But we've never really paid any attention to this data. And quite frankly, what's so exciting about it? Wages were in line. There was no real big thing. Benefits are up. I mean, they're, they're splitting hairs here. But here's what's important about this. Chicago PMI, and we all know that we're looking at city PMIs now, came in weaker than expected. We were looking for 45, we came in at 37. That is a clear indication that things are getting worse, that the economy is getting worse. It's not overheating. This is a clear indication. It's a purchasing manager's index. Can't, we were looking for contraction of 45, which is low. We came in at 38. Consumer confidence, spending, how are they spending? We were looking for 104, we came in at 97. The market should have ripped on this. As a matter of fact, when I was trading live in the room today, I even said, we're gonna rip, we should rip on this. Now let's just take a look at this for a second and drill into that data and see what's going on so that we can just take a look at it. Now if we come here, we're gonna note the very first thing that we do is just note that 830 bar. Right? And that's when the new economic data came out that everybody, for some reason, was fascinated with today. And then we're going to look at what happened around that 10 o'clock area. Here's 945, and that data came out. Did we ever make it higher? No. 10 o'clock came out. We looked like we were going to push, and then we didn't. Okay? By 11 o'clock, we broke that level, and we never looked back. Okay? Now, why is this important? It's important because you had weak economic data. We're always looking for sediment. So we had sediment that actually said to us, sentiment that actually said to us that the bond market should rally, right? Meaning the bond market, price, yields are going to drop and prices are going to go higher. Therefore, equities are going to go higher. And what happened? The exact opposite. So what's happening, I, this is conjecture. This part is conjecture. What I think is happening is if we look at the market and look at how we ended the day, around, right? what I think is happening is I think it's becoming pretty clear that the Fed is going to change their language at the end of this meeting. And I think that that's how they're positioning themselves. That is conjecture. That is what I think is going on. I'm going to trade what's going to happen, but I don't have another answer for why Microsoft had an amazing quarter and they've done nothing but sell it down again. We have to look at what's happening, okay? So tomorrow, the people that think SMCI is going to miraculously lift or NVIDIA is going to miraculously lift off of this or AMD is going to be just fine, okay? Microsoft crushed and raised guidance, and this is what it got for its troubles, all right? We have to look at what's happening and what's going on with the sediment. And, and, and to me, if you look at this and you don't even see the balance on the thir this third day, which you should have today, this is very clear what's going on. They're selling equities. Now, the question what people are going to say here, and this is what I like about the market, people are going to say, oh, well, we're just going to rotate into the copper names, right? And this is somebody that actually owns the copper names. Here's the problem. If the PE, right, if the pricing is not stabilized because they're going to possibly talk about raising rates, which they're floating, and it, there's like a one or two percent chance of it, but now it's out there, and they're going to they're going to push the cuts back to November. Then the pricing of all asset classes is overinflated, right? So you, so that's the point I think people are missing. So the price of all asset classes that are risk assets, whether it's gold or silver or copper, they're all going to be overinflated if we have no E. Okay, if the equity risk premium is where it is, there's only one way they're going to go to it. They're only going to go one way. Okay, they're going to go to very short term bonds. They're going to start looking at the two year again, right? And buying the two year and getting their 5%, which is now it's over 5% again. I mean, why don't you just buy that? And this is the problem that, that people need to get. Here's, here we are on November 1st, right? And this is when the bond market sold. So if I clear this out, 
and this is kind of important, so just please pay attention to this before we go any further. So if you go here and you look at November 1st, okay? And I know people watch these videos sometimes and they'll say, you're over my head. I would suggest you watch these videos until you get it. You can go watch other videos that are not as in depth, that are more there to entertain than to educate, but they're not gonna explain what's going on so that this is why what you're doing is not working. All right, and I, I mean that just to be nice. Like you need to understand this stuff because this is why gold's not working. This is why silver's not working, right? This is why nothing <laughs> worked today, right? When people look at crude oil, I mean, did, did, did we achieve world peace over the weekend, right? I, you know, I mean, anybody? Did something happen that achieved world peace, right? I mean, look at, look at oil, right? It's not going to matter what the asset class is, right? It's just not going to matter. And this is a really important part of what's going on here that people are not going to get. So it's not going to matter the asset, okay? They're not gonna rush into gold. I said this when this popped over here that that was the high. Doesn't matter, now you've got an island continuation gap. Gold's toast. Silver, they're going to reprice assets, okay? That's what's going on here. And Powell's not there to help us. A matter of fact, he's there to put basically his foot on our neck tomorrow, to be quite honest, because he wants the market to kind of come in a little bit because he wants things to get a little harder so that he doesn't have to raise rates. This is where I, where I think he's going with it. But I don't think he's going to have to do that. I want to be really clear about that. I don't think he's going to have to raise rates. I think that this is going to cool. I think it's going to take much longer than they think. And they're going into an election year. And it doesn't matter what side of the aisle you're on. You have to be aware of that. So this is how I view the world. Now, I do think that all, all assets, all risk assets that are not short term are probably going to come in on depending upon what he says tomorrow. So 2.30 is way more important than 2 o'clock. So please take that away. All right. So then we have to look at what's actually going on. So NVIDIA tonight is down about $13. We're going to start there. And what people are going to say is, oh, this will be fine. Well, the problem with this is it's linked to everything else. And this is from someone that has a very large, long position in NVIDIA. And what you're going to start to see here is nothing is going to be safe with the way that earnings came out tonight. Okay, you're going to start seeing them restrict a little bit. I'm not saying you're not going to bounce around. That's not what I'm saying. But the idea that we're going to miraculously lift through all this now is not what we're dealing with. We can see very clearly down here how we held the 841.72 level. That is not a coincidence that you stop there when you mark this off. Okay, that is right where the 55 is. So we hit that tonight and then we bounce. And that's really important to get. Okay, that's really important for us to get and really important for us to understand. And I'm happy that that's rallying. But the earnings tonight were anything but good. Anything but good. And there's a litany of them to start with. So if we start with Starbucks, which is a staple, and you look at the stock, you're down about $10 tonight. And this was just an absolute dumpster fire. Earnings, complete miss. And revenue was a complete miss. Guidance was disgusting. So it's not really a great quarter for Starbucks, okay? Now, where can that get to? Yeah, my personal opinion is I don't see why it's not going to continue to drop and get to the low 60s, but that's a matter of time. If I had to tell you to me out of the big dogs, I, and I want to be really clear about this. Okay, so are you going to get some names like Root that everyone's going to say, oh, well, just go for this one. Okay, maybe you're going to find one or two names that trade up like this, and maybe they continue, but they're not going to lift the indexes. Okay, and it's just going to be a matter of time before they crack next. You're not going to have one or two stocks go up if they're going to reprice everything. And they'll reprice them fast. And this is what's great about the market. You get a reset and then you just kind of go forward. Now, SMCI was down a total of 14% at one point tonight. And really what you're seeing here is a miss on the revenue. So I, I want to be really clear about this. You have to look at what is actually happening. Okay? You cannot delude yourself over what is happening. I want to give you an example of this. Now, in front of you is what we're doing live in the room, why this is all coming out. Amazon beat. We know that Amazon beat stock traded up. There was a nice trade there on the long side. If you had to be, you have to be quick after hours. But S SMCI was moving. Revenues was low. It was a huge beat on the earnings, but you had to see guidance. And once guidance came out, 
you saw your answer to it. So if N NVIDIA and Dell were up in sympathy and I was typing and trading, but they did not beat revenue. And the guidance when it started to come out wasn't great. I traded the move and I got right out of it on the bounce around 409. And then I just got out of the way because I saw it was coming after AMD. And what's important about this is that into this call, into this, people had no idea why the stock was up. But if you knew why the stock was up, right, and you knew why it missed numbers, then you know that you can do one, you could have shorted it, or two, if you're trading it, you take what you can get and you get out of the way. What I did is if you take a look at what's going on there is buying into the dip, and then all I'm doing from the dip is just getting the heck out of the way as soon as it retested right there, which was where it closed. That's all I did. It's a real simple trade. And the whole purpose of explaining this to you is so you can understand what happened. This was not a great quarter. I, I, I really don't care what people think about it. You know, it's going to do this. It's going to do that. Uh, next quarter is going to be great. When you dig into the numbers, they weren't great. And the, and the guide was a decent guide at best. Now, maybe some institutions come out and they try and make it look good. But it was not ideal. And I, I really wish it was because I, would, I have a long bias on the trade. And I would like that. But it wasn't. So I, this is what I think happens. I think you might see some kind of bounce for the people that are short, and then you're going to get the rollover. But we're going to trade what happens tomorrow. I mean, that's all we can do with it. But you were in the 722 area. To see this come back down to there should not shock anyone. To see it retest 860 tomorrow, it's going to be a madhouse tomorrow because of the amount of options. It's going to be all over the place. But this was not the E of the PE that you needed. It wasn't even close to what you needed to see. It was basically a revenue miss. And, and you have to call it what it is. This is why SMCI is so important, even though it's a much smaller company than the others. The two fastest growing companies on a revenue basis year over year are NVIDIA and then SMCI. SMCI missed revenues, period. Okay, that leads to contraction of, of risk assets. It's, it's really that simple. So you cannot look at this technically with all of this above it and think that you're going to have, oh, everything's rosy and we're just going to go back to highs, right? It's, it's not going to work that way. You actually have to trade what's happening. If you look at AMD, AMD has been and continues to be, in my opinion, a dumpster fire. It's never beaten earnings. It's never come close to, to having this blowout quarter. Once again, the quarter was filled with like pipe dreams. The only reason that it's not down more, candidly, and I know people love the name, but the only reason you're not down more is because you're already down. You're down from last quarter. You're down 7%. If you were up here, this would have been a bloodbath. So by looking at this and how this quarter went and guidance. So let's take a look at guidance so that you can see what I'm talking about. So I want to get this out so that you can see it and understand this. If you take a look at AMD, people are going to look and go, oh, well, you beat by a penny. And then sales are 5.4. Sales are 5.473 five, versus 5.459. Five, I mean, it's like they sold somebody a pencil just so they could actually come out and beat. It's ridiculous, right? I mean, what they're actually doing to show that they actually beat, it's silly. Data center revenues up, gaming's uh, clients are up, gaming is getting crushed, embedded's getting down, right? Okay, shares trading lower, filing inline Q revenue. Also embedded segment down, okay. So sectors are down, but AI all of a sudden is just gonna boom, even though it hasn't boomed for them at all yet, but okay. The issue, and even though they raised this, nobody cares because it's like the boy that cried wolf. You're gonna hit a point, people are not gonna believe you. What I think is most important about this quarter is when you looked at the guidance. And you realized here that the AMDC's revenue is 5.4 to 6. If the estimate's 5.7 and you're throwing a 5.4 out there, and that's your range, people are going to say, oh, well, you do that so you can average it together and you're getting 5.75. No, the fact that you're saying that you're at 5.4 is going to get you in that range, right? You shouldn't even have this out there. So this is showing weakness, okay? And that's one of the reasons, one of the reasons why it's down. I would strongly suggest that people listen to these conference calls if you have the time. If you don't, you don't. So what does all this mean? It means that you need to find out what the true direction is. And I think by looking at the market, anyone that is looking at this and doesn't understand that risk assets are going to be under pressure, they're going to have a really tough time here now. 
I, we have to see what other names are going to come out that could possibly lift the market. Thursday's a huge earnings date, but now we have to see what the Fed's going to do. But it's very difficult to look at this market under the pressure that you are with the equity risk premium and how poor earnings were today. Even Amazon, in my opinion, was okay, but it was nowhere near as good as, as Microsoft and nowhere near as good as Microsoft. And it certainly was nowhere near as good as, go good as Google was. And they were not safe. So to think that something is mysteriously going to come out and save this tomorrow after you've already sliced the 55, I just rather not deal in delusion. I just rather deal in fact to make money that way. That's it.